Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have m cubed minus n cubed equals 61. m and n are integers. And we're, going, we're trying to solve for m and n, obviously, right? Diophantine equations are basically equations with integer solutions most of the time. Sometimes there are rational solutions. And they may have infinitely many solutions. They may have no solutions. Or they might have a finite number. We don't know. One of the tools that we use is called modular arithmetic. Another one is factoring, which is something we're going to use. I also made a video about modular arithmetic. You can also go ahead and check that out. All right, great. So M and N are integers, and we're going to go ahead and factor this. It's nice that this is factorable, because what if you had M to the third minus N to the fourth? Let me tell you, if you had those different powers that are not factorable, you'd probably go for modular arithmetic. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor this since this is factorable. Take advantage. Uh, we can factor it into m minus n times m squared plus mn plus n squared. Notice that when there's a minus sign, this is going to be a plus sign and vice versa. And of course, this is equal to 61. Now, 61 is prime. Hopefully, you knew that, right? And it can only be factored a certain way. Um, m since m and n are integers, in 61 has seems to be two factors. I mean, it can't have two factors, right? 61 is a prime number, so it's only divisible by 1 and 61. So let's go ahead and consider those cases. And I'm going to start with the this one being 1 and this one being a 61. Now, why do I go with that? Because the second expression looks a little bit more complicated. I'm, I'm just assuming, that's an assumption by the way at this point, that it's bigger. Okay, but we're going to find out. We have to verify. So we get the following equation. M minus N equals 1. And that's an intersection, right? M squared plus MN plus N squared equals 61. Great. Uh, this system is beautiful. If you were working with real numbers, obviously there will be infinitely many solutions that satisfy this. But uh, in this case, it's a different story. We'll find out. Okay. How do I solve this system? First of all, let's go ahead and make the second one, the second equation nicer by considering the following. I can go ahead and write this one as m minus n squared, considering that we have m minus n. And then, of course, this gives me minus 2n. So I have to add 3mn to this to get plus mn. Notice that this is 1mn. And that's equal to 61. Get the idea? Be familiar with these factoring tricks because in algebra we use them a lot. And obviously algebra is the foundation for everything, right? So m minus n is equal to 1. So this leaves us, uh, this leaves us with a 60, which means mn is equal to 20. So we get a new system. m minus n equals 1. mn equals 20. And I'm sure you can solve the system even mentally, right? Easy. Think about two numbers whose difference is 1, and you want their products to be 20. I mean, 20 can be factored as 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3, 4, 5. I mean, 3 doesn't work, but 4, 5. Uh-oh, I got it. Or 5, 4? Which one? Well, the bigger number needs to be m because that's a positive difference. Make sense? So with equations like this, if it's not a sum, you have to be careful because m and n are not interchangeable, even though in a multiplication problem, they are. So in this case, from here, I get m equals 5, n equals 4 easily. But guess what? We can do the flip-flip, which means m can be negative 4 and n can be negative 5. By the way, this is a nice trick. If you already got one pair, you can switch them around and negate both, then you'll get the other pair. Make sense? You get the trick? Algebra is full of tricks. What can I do? Right? So now uh, we got the two ordered pairs, 5, 4, and negative 4, negative 5. Are those the only solutions? Well, first of all, go ahead and check it out. If you plug them in, right, 5 cubed is 125. 4 cubed is 64, and their difference is 61. Yay! That's probably how they came up with this problem, don't you think? This problem is from a math competition, but I can't remember what it was. Most probably, I'm thinking 90%, it's from Russia. Okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know the source. And sometimes, you know, different competitions use each other's problems, and you can't really tell who came up with the problem first. Anyways, so, these are the solutions that I got so far. And obviously, the second one is going to satisfy. You can check it out. But how do I check the other case? Well, the other case is when uh, 1 and 61 are switched around. So we kind of have the following. m minus n is equal to 61. And m squared plus mn 
plus n squared is equal to 1. And here, by doing this, uh, you're basically going to go through the same thing. Squared plus 3mn equals 1, and m minus n is equal to 61. Uh-oh, I got a square 61. What is 61 squared? I think it's 3,721. Did I guess that right? Of course, I knew that. Plus 3mn equals 1. From here, we get 3mn equals negative 3720. And if you divide by 3, mn would be negative 1240. Easy, right? This is how I divide by 3, actually. When I get a number like this, 37 is not divisible, but 36 is. So I'm thinking about it as 36, and there's a 120. If you divide by 3, you get 12, and then this is a 40, 12, 40. You get the idea? Okay, it's kind of break it down. A lot of shortcuts, I know. Maybe I should make a separate video with shortcuts, a series of videos. So that's mn. I also know that m minus n is equal to 61. And guess what happens if you try to solve this system? Do you want to know? Seriously? Let me just give you the m value. That should be good enough. 61 minus i times the square root of 1,239 all over 2. Solutions are complex. They're not even real numbers, right? So how can you... I mean, they're not integers, obviously. They're not even... What is it called? The Gaussian integers, right? They're not even Gaussian integers. Anyways, no integers, no reals. Too bad. And if you look at the graph of this scenario, the second one, you're going to realize something interesting. Uh-oh. They don't intersect, which means, of course, there are no real solutions for this type of system. Make sense? Okay. That's what it means. All right, great. So basically, uh, the first method um, kind of gave us I mean, I'm sorry, not the first method. The first case gave us good solutions. The second case didn't. One thing that we didn't consider, though, we didn't look at the negatives, right? Do you think that they're going to work? Well, let's check it out. For example, m minus n can be negative 1, and m squared plus n squared plus mn, I don't know why I switched them around, can be negative 6 to 1. Is that possible? Let's check it out. If m minus n squared plus 3mn is equal to negative 6 to 1, and this stuff, uh, this stuff is equal to, what is it called? Uh, negative 1. Its square is going to be 1. I mean, subtract it and negative 62. So this needs to be negative 62, but that's not divisible by 3. So negative 1 is not going to work. And if you switch them around, I don't think that that's going to work either, but that's for you to check because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And wait a minute, uh, we forgot to do something, did we? No, actually, we, we did, we're fine. But uh, if you go ahead and check, let me tell you real quick, that if you check the other case, you're going to realize that, let me just save you some time, you're going to realize that there are no solutions uh, to this either. And this really bring, uh, brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.